of uh, civil disobedience, yes. then it, it, it's not something to be opposed. Because the, the truth of the matter is that there's a section of the country that feels disenfranchised mm -hmm. and, and you cannot uh, therefore limit their right to express themselves. I, I think everyone agrees that uh, it is legally questionable. So um, when you see the US ambassador and all these other uh, concerned groups uh, trying to engage the opposition, then in a way they're achieving their objective. The opposition is achieving their objective because what they want is audience. And it is true that there's need for some kind of audience. Mm -hmm. um, I saw the, uh, what you might call the first list of cabinet secretaries proposed by the president. Yes. And, and, and it's, I think it's reasonable to conclude that uh, one thing that's not in his mind is national dialogue. Mm -hmm. Um, it's kind of a continuation of, of um, the, the current regime and of course those who were in the Jubilee camp uh, before the, the 8th of August. So there's, there, there are not many ways to force the President and Jubilee to negotiate other than uh, perpetuating civil disobedience and ensuring that to some extent you make governing, governing difficult for them. Right. And normally if you do that, then governments tend to listen. All right, Steve, 30th January, they say it's then or never. But if he is sworn in, then who is he going to command and from where? I think it's, uh, it's thank you so much, but I think it's very important to yeah. clarify that uh, any activity on NASA program of action happening on the 30th or any other such date is part of the continuation of a process to delegitimize Uhuru's government, yeah. uh, to disrupt it for whatever reason but it's not an activity that is not anchored in law. Uh, so even in terms of framing the swearing in, I think we should clarify. Mm -hmm. The swearing in, quote unquote, or maybe the parallel swearing in, uh, that the, the, the proper swearing in within the constitution is a subsequent of an election. Uh, because swearing in is done in Article 141 of the constitution. Yeah. And you're swearing in the president elect, mm -hmm. which means there must have been someone declared elected you know, in terms of Article 140, if there was someone, if there was contestation, the court ought to have resolved in the manner in which it resolved. An election is a consequence of Article 138, sub Article 4, which NASA did not participate in. I understand this to be a very difficult situation because it could, people could say that maybe it could be a, 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 an, an error of judgment, you know, uh, on the part of NASA not to have participated in the election. But again, now, where we are, the truth is this. Yeah. Uh, Uru Kenyatta is now serving a term of five years as part of 142 of the Constitution. To reverse that requires significant effort. Uh, that, those efforts have been outlined already in the Constitution, under Article 146. Vacancy in the presidency. Mm -hmm. You require the president either to be impeached. Uh, Jubilee now controls the, both houses, so yeah. that is an improbable outcome. Or either the president is dead, in which case the, the, the deputy takes over probably also an, an improbable outcome, or that the president has resigned, in which case he must resign with his deputy, uh, William Ruto, in which case the deputy takes over if he resigns alone. So I think in terms of negotiation of activities that could be done, electoral law related reforms, because there are many, uh, most of this NASA program works actually good. What they will not attend, in, uh, what they will not achieve or succeed in achieving is um, conducting a parallel swearing in as a way of forcing an election, that they will, you will need significant effort to innovate within Article 140, 146 on what a vacancy may, may how a vacancy may, may occur within the presidency. Otherwise, who is serving five years? For me, as a lawyer, where I stand from, I'm not, I'm not prepared to innovate outside the law. Yes. Uh, I think there are so many critical electoral law issues that cannot be ignored. I saw yesterday, IBC is now uh, beginning to prepare their own election report. I hope they finalize it and they allow stakeholders to, inter to interact with it because there are questions that we want to, and if there's time in this session, we could highlight some of those areas that are electoral reform issues that are outside the election itself. Because that is the only significant issue that NASA will have a challenge in achieving. Otherwise, Kenyans should understand any parallel activity, be it the swearing in, the People's Assembly, you know, the boycott of, of goods. All these are just part of the continuation, as I've said, to delegitimize and discredit the president, the, the presidency, which is which everybody is entitled to, but Kenyans should not think that as a consequence of the swearing in, the parallel swearing in, 